Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Innovation Podcast, your source for all things innovation. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, today I have Prem Kiran on the line. He's founder and CEO over at Hypersonics, Inc. Prem, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me. All right, so uh, excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk some about the consumer um, space, this consumer commerce space, and also get into the growth of Hypersonics. But before we do that, um, let's just go a little bit further into what you're doing over at Hypersonics. Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure. Uh, so Hypersonics is uh, is an artificial intelligence company, very much focused around the consumer commerce industries. Uh, so we work with retail and various other enterprises in the e-commerce space, restaurant space, hospitality space, in leveraging AI capabilities and automating a variety of their functions, of enterprise functions that are bread and butter for these businesses. That's awesome. And uh, I think that's a great transition. So let's just, I mean, really important technology you're working on. Um, let's just jump into today's topic. So consumer commerce space, the, this rapid growth of hypersonics. I mean, what do you attribute this to? Well, a, a few things. I think there are, there are obviously, um, you know, there's market dynamics that make it even more relevant to what it was, uh, you know, two years ago when I started the company. So two years ago when I started the company, the whole mission of the company, which still remains the mission and is a lot more reinforced today, is that uh, automation and autonomous technologies are going to be a big part of our future. And we see that with cars. We're going to see that with enterprises. We're going to see how enterprises are going to be more and more autonomous, more and more automated. Uh, and 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 the and the value for businesses are pretty obvious. One, it reduces the total cost of ownership. What typically would cost them a lot of uh, man plus machine resources in the in the old world is going to get much more faster, much more easier, much more lower cost. Mm -hmm. Second is the speed of automation and autonomy. Right, the fact that um, you know you can automate a lot of functions, uh, everything from whether you're you know deciding about the price of products that you want to place on your website or on your store or you know, what kind of product bundles you do to create the highest level of margins, or what products do you even source and don't source, whether you're a restaurant or a retailer or an e-commerce company. All of these decisions today are being done manually by a bunch of people who are sitting with a ton of Excel spreadsheets with a long lead times. Um, assuming, if you think about the future world, a lot of these things are going to be done by machines, um, and it's going to be done based on a lot of tribal knowledge, a lot of pattern recognition, a lot of machine learning, a lot of AI capabilities ingested into the platform, uh, which is going to give them uh, a quantum leap in terms of speed, in terms of efficiency, in terms of total cost, in terms of you know, competitive advantage uh, through which they can uh, drive their business forward. Um, and that's where that's what uh, Hypersonics today is enabling a lot of our clients with. Um, so we, uh, as an example, work with clients uh, on the higher end all the way from someone like an Amazon uh, to uh, companies like Smart and Final, which are a large uh, national chain, to uh, smaller uh, regional chains um, uh, that could be like a Z Pizza or a, or a, or a Veggie Grill. Uh, so we work with a whole gamut of companies, including hospitals like Hyatt and, and Marriott, uh, with, with the sole purpose of helping them uh, drive AI capabilities into their enterprise platforms, uh, very focused around top line and margin growth. Uh, and today we have clients who today have consistently seen three to five percent growth in margins, uh, either in terms of growth by a top line or in helping reduce operational uh, costs, which seems to be extremely relevant in the COVID era, right? I mean, one of the things, Adam, that's, uh, that we are seeing more and more in the COVID era is, uh, you know, people uh, are squeezed in terms of margins. People have less money to spend, uh, but want to make more money and, and have to keep up their margins. The costs have gone up just with all the rules and regulations around social distancing, delivery, pickup, takeout, all of those capabilities, all of those requirements today enforces a higher cost to doing cost of doing business. And uh, a lot of these businesses today are looking for technologies like ours, which helps them automate and create autonomy in their enterprise landscape that helps keep their margins efficient. 
I love it. And I mean, I'm a huge fan of what you're doing. And, and the reason, so I, I wasn't always, just to be clear. So my uh, the other co-founder here, his name's Shirag, and he's the one who got me on this automation bandwagon and on getting these softwares created and other things. Because at first, I didn't really understand it. I think a lot of business owners don't necessarily get it until they automate a task or two and they see what that does and how it frees up time in their staff um, and like for their staff to do other things that you want to do and how other projects can now get done done and how some of these rudimentary tasks um, can and can be alleviated from the day-to-day -day work of your of your workforce. And so the other the other co-founder here, I give him all credit on this one, Chirag. Every time we automate or we add another piece of software or task or something, I'm always like, all right, what are we doing next, Chirag? And he cracks me up because he's like, oh, now who wants to automate? Oh, now who thinks that this is a good idea? And I'm always like, all right, I'm on your bandwagon. Leave me alone if you want me to keep doing these interviews. <laughs> so, so, so. So relax there. Too, you know? I mean, everybody wants to save time. At the end of the day, everybody wants to make money and everybody wants to save time, right? So at the end of the day, you see, that's the, that's the fundamental underpinnings of all of these things. Whether you mm -hmm. think about autonomous cars, it's about helping people, you know, leverage the time that they're sit, sitting on the traffic on a 405 in L.A. or on 101 in the Bay Area where you're taking one hour to go from point to point. And how do I maximize that time? Uh, in doing something that I enjoy doing, right? It could be just as good as listening to music or reading news or talking to your kids. You could, you know, at the end of the day, if you have technology that can help you do that, and in our cases, these are, to exactly to your point, Adam, um, these are pretty, you know, significant investment. Like, if you look at clients that are, uh, like, smart final bachelors, these guys have massive retail. Uh, they mm -hmm. have, like, you know, 250,000 items or 300,000 items in their supermarket stores, and imagine they, if they had to look at all those items and had to decide on the top 20 items that they should change the price on to drive increased <laughs> profitability, right? They have to sit and analyze all those. Bring, know, out, just, bring just, out the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine that, that. That's how it used to be done. Excel spreadsheet and a group of people <laughs> sitting and listing out all these items, look at all the past sales, and look at how sales has fluctuated when every time they change price. All of mm -hmm. these things were being done in such a manual multi-step process and today if you can push a button and all these things happen automatically and then you can just use like a voice interface or a google like search interface where you can ask questions saying hey tell me how should i price this item over next uh, or uh, labor day weekend or over christmas for this year and the system is able to respond back in voice or through text all of a sudden it's this, it's a complete shift in experience it's a complete shift in terms of how much time you invest and it takes the error prone nature of human involvement out of the equation, right? Once the machines are in place, you are less prone to errors or human errors in terms of, you know, just imagine how many numbers cutting and pasting stuff in Excel spreadsheets and things like that. So that's where the true automation and the power of autonomous capabilities in an enterprise is going to totally leapfrog what the future is going to hold for us. So, Prem, I'm one of those uh, low-hanging fruit guys, so I know there's a lot of people out there listening that haven't quite jumped on this bandwagon yet, and I want to give them an example of some low-hanging fruit out there that you see, and I know this is going to vary from client to client, industry to industry, but I know in general there's themes that you see time and time again for companies that maybe haven't gone down this path or taking it seriously or really, really explored how things could change in their processes. Um, what is some of the low-hanging fruit that you know right now that some of the people that are listening right now probably have in their processes and or opportunity? That's a great question, Adam. Uh, and we, we today, you know, work with uh, KFC, Taco Bell, and all these brands on on the exact same problem. And the, and the, and, and the, the answer to the question is pretty straightforward is the lowest hanging fruit is where you can cut down costs, right? I mean, those are things that are in your control. And what we have mm -hmm. seen time and again is, you know, you can leverage capabilities in a system by looking at your data in terms of, you know, optimizing your products and menu items, as an example, right? So you could, you know, there could be, you could be selling 200 items out of which only really 20 are really selling, but you're sourcing and you have the cost of, cost of goods and the cost of labor and cost of storage and all of that uh, for all of them. And you probably don't even know uh, where all these costs are going. So one of the areas that we have seen a uh, high, high level of immediate value is in cost optimization. And the cost optimization happens either in terms of labor optimization, cost of goods optimization, better way to replenish your goods, or better way to manage out of stock and overstock, right? So we have clients today who 
suddenly see a spike in demand on their online website for takeouts or curbside pickup or for their e-commerce transaction where people are buying you know, hand sanitizers or whatever it is, but there are 15 other items that people are not even caring about. So how do you optimize your inventory uh, and, and manage cost effectively? Is a very low hanging, is a simple low hanging fruit that you can easily achieve because it's fully in your control. Um, in a similar manner, even, even just labor optimization, right? What hours of the day are uh, are most effective in terms of return on investment, in terms of sales per labor hour that is being spent because the cost of labor is going up and the cost of, you know, keeping a store open is going up. The cost of, you know, uh, the whole process of, you know, managing the whole social distancing, COVID, post-COVID reality is higher. Uh, and so understanding what times of the day and how much labor do you really require in store to manage this is again uh, a very you can do this very effectively. It, it definitely directly shows into your margin. And these are these are some quick low hanging fruits that you can handle. And the third one, I which is focused more on top line, is around product bundling, right? So today you see that mm-hmm. people uh, people's habits have changed. Just a classic example I can give you from a from the food business is as people are more and more working from home, uh, the concept of uh, family packs have become much more common versus, you know, uh, uh, a la carte, right? So people are, since they're working from home, instead of ordering a, a small pizza, now most of them are ordering a family size pizza, and mostly they're ordering a, a combo pack in terms of family size pizza with a Diet Coke plus a side. So how do you bundle products more effectively with a differentiated pricing where you can actually make more money and more profits by bringing the right products together. And this is true in e-commerce, where people are buying, you know, shopping for clothes and stuff sitting at home, or whether people are buying, you know, uh, grocery items, or, you know, are buying, you know, pharmaceutical items. In all of these cases, there is a shift in behavior in terms of how people are shopping today uh, and buying things. And I think there is, uh, you, if you as a, as, a, as a commerce consumer or a commerce business can be smart about how you bundle products and how you price them, and what kind of um, customer segments you target, um, there is there is definitely a, a significant amount of top line growth that you can see. Man, that's awesome. So Prem, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about Hypersonics, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out and to connect with your team? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so you can definitely go to our website. It's hypersonics. Dot, uh, dot AI. Uh, you, there are several contacts over there. You can reach us at uh, you know uh, info at hypersonics dot uh, dot io or partner at, at hypersonics dot io or sales at hypersonics dot io. So there are a variety of email addresses that you can reach out on. Uh, you are also free to reach out to me personally. Uh, it's prem at hypersonics dot io. Fantastic. Well, Prem, really appreciate you coming on the show today and uh, sharing more about all the great work that you're doing over at Hypersonics and uh, Trends and Commerce right now. I mean, great stuff there. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Innovation, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments in the video. Love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And Prem, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks, Adam. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it.